Today we're going to be taking a look at the Rebellion Air Air Jordan 1. There has been more and more anticipation building around this sneaker and I'm excited to give you guys an in-depth review with these compared to older sneakers that released in the past. So if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ and this is the DNA Show. If you're new to this channel, one thing I love to do is give you guys early looks on the shoes that are set to come out and let you guys get a better understanding on the quality, styles, cuts, and materials. Consider hitting the subscribe button and joining the fam. We are very close to a million subscribers and you could be the next one to get us there. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and crack open this box and see what these shoes is talking about. So you have your classic Air Jordan 1 style box with the lift off lid, but these have a major twist on them. You have your matte black finish, which are glossy lettering all throughout the entire box with the all over print and then you have the red band X over the center of the lid now when it comes to the text that you see all over printed on this box we'll go over it in a little bit when I break down the history of the sneaker but basically it says they can't stop you from wearing them and in a couple minutes I'll explain all of that to you now before I get to reading the size tag and everything else on the box I got to show you guys one thing that I saw when it comes to the band ones that came out in 2011 as you can see on the top right here, you have the Band X. It's a little bit off-centered, but it's essentially the same vibes when you think about the Band X here and the Band X here. And again, I'll explain a little bit more about this shoe in a second as well. But as you can see, you have the band here and the band on the sides of the box. And you have the Imagine If with the question mark in red on the front. And then it says Imagine If in the matte black on the side. Now, when it comes to the bordering sides of the box, you have a gray Nike with the swoosh on every single side of the box. And the size tag reads Air Jordan 1 Retro High. OG black white particle gray size 13 just for me and retail is set to be hundred and seventy dollars now cracking open the lid of the box right here you have a ooh, this is actually dope you have a print and this is actually from the band Air Jordan 1 commercial that we saw back in the 80s so when I flip the paper open here you have the same thing and you have the red bars that go over the sneaker and just like I showed you in the commercial that's giving you those same exact vibes so you kind of get where we're going right here. I'm gonna explain a little bit more in a second though. Now flipping back this paper right here, you have an all white paper and then you got the shoe. Oh, you got the shoe. Okay, first impressions of this sneaker. I gotta touch them first. You know, I always gotta touch them. This is a very interesting material. I might have to get back to you guys when it comes to the impressions because there's a lot of details on this shoe. And before we get into breaking down all the details and the cuts and the materials and the design pattern, we got to talk about the history first. Michael Jordan came into the NBA in 1985 and immediately shook at the game soon as he touched the court. Not only with how he played, but the shoes that he wore. Before the original Air Jordan 1 had came out, Michael Jordan had loved wearing the Nike Airships and that was the actual shoe that got Michael Jordan in trouble with the NBA. They threatened to find him every time that he wore the sneaker because it had different colors on the shoe and typically most of the players back then just wore white with black on the shoes and no color added to it and Nike said you know what Jordan don't worry we'll take care of that fine we're gonna turn this into a great opportunity for a marketing campaign so as the original Air Jordan 1 started to surface they realized they could campaign around that and create a lot of promotion for the customers and they told the consumers basically this if NBA wants to ban us that's okay because they can't stop you from wearing them and that commercial alone that we just saw again I'm telling you right now is very iconic and one of the reasons why the band one is still such a nostalgic sneaker to this day and probably be one of Jordan's greatest shoes of all time which brings me to the next topic and the two shoes that I will be using in today's comparison is going to be the shadow Air Jordan 1 and the band bread Air Jordan 1 from 2011 with the band X on the back there's definitely a lot that goes along with this sneaker as well and I think these two tie in perfectly and hopefully I can help break down how this 22 version came about so before we get into the comparisons I want to make sure that I break down this sneaker so you guys have a full in-depth understanding of the shoe and all the crazy details on it then we'll talk about comparisons and numbers and resale values and what I think and what you think and everything like that starting with the bottom of the shoe you have an all gray Air Jordan 1 outsole going up to the midsole all white with the white stitch and then the upper all the upper when it comes to the base color blocking on this sneaker you could look at this in two different ways you could consider it as a bread color blocking because it has the same color blocking or you could call it the shadow simply because it's essentially the same color. I do think that it's very interesting that they went with the band theme and we didn't get a bread colorway on this shoe, but I'm also kind of getting that old school black and white film vibe when it comes to the video and the commercial back in the day, and then having that prominent red X on the back of the heel. Now, when it comes to the actual materials on the upper, you have leather all throughout the sneaker, and it's almost like, it's like a cracked kind of leather. Hopefully I can show you the details with some closer up images, but it's not actually cracked and it doesn't fully look tumbled. It's hard to explain, honestly. Hopefully these close-up shots can give you guys a better look. 
look. And when it comes to the overall feel and touch of the shoe, it has kind of a rough feel yet a soft feel at the same time. So I can't say this is the best or the worst quality. It's almost kind of like in its own lane. Now when you look at every black area on the shoe from the toe box, the midfoot or the back area around the collar, that all has the same words that you saw on the top of the box with the same exact font and it has that kind of glossy print all throughout the upper. And when you go to the toe box, the swoosh or around the heel, you have the same exact quote but it looks like it's a different font and it's a lot smaller with the white print over the gray compared to that glossy finish that matches with the upper. And honestly when I look at it a little bit more I feel like it's more of a light gray text compared to a white text. Going to the side of the hill you have your standard Air Jordan Wings logo here. On the mesh tongue same thing all black these come standard with a pair of black laces and then on the top of the tongue you have a black patch with the white nike air text and you have a second pair of white laces that go with these as well looking at the sock liner in the insole everything is all black with the white text and it says nike air on both of those and then obviously like we spoke about earlier you got the red band x on the back now this is something that i really wanted to get into breaking down the comparisons between these two especially because this is like the band 1.0 version that never saw the light of the day because it actually got scrapped it went to outlet stores was considered a b-grade release and never was actually really a release at all like it was an idea that kind of came to life but didn't really technically so it's not like officially a band one yet it is at the same i don't know it's kind of hard to explain essentially to sneakerheads we call these the band ones because they did kind of come out but when you actually think about it these are like the official first band one release but because of the confusion, I think that's why they called these the Rebellionaires and called it more of a Rebellion-like sneaker compared to the banned Air Jordan 1s. So when it comes to the lingo and the words behind the use of the promo on the current release, I think that's kind of what plays into factor as well on why they call these the Rebellionaires. And if that was completely confusing, let me know down below in the comment section because I was just thinking about what I just said right there. I don't even know if that made sense, but hopefully it did. And if it didn't, another way you could think about it is to sneakerhead we might call these the band 1.0s and these the band 2.0s but then you got the other people that's like well the breads the ones that came out in 2016 nah 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 bro those is just the bread ones they tried to put a whole new thing on it these got the band x i feel like if it don't got the band x you can't call them the band ones that's just how i feel but again we can talk about that later so anyways when you look at these two shoes side by side like i was just talking about the band x is something that is very very iconic it's kind of got that red paintbrush stroke like you see here on the box and you see that same exact print on the back end of the heels of these two shoes as well. And when it comes to the comparison of these two shoes, I was definitely interested to see what people think about these simply because, you know, it's kind of like a hot drop. It's the latest, greatest type thing. But I know for a fact, a lot of people like the bands. And if I could only pick one of these two, I would definitely go with these bands right here. Now, I wanted to see what the people think. So if you haven't already, follow me on IG so you can participate in the polls and see the results here on the channel. This is what they said. 86% of the people chose the band ones and 14% percent of the people chose the rebellion air ones i think that completely makes sense in my eyes i already explained how i feel about it now let's see what people think about the shadows because i got some type of feeling that they're gonna like these a little bit more than the shadows because they're all crazy and limited and all those other things but i hope they don't i still hope that more people go towards the shadows let's just see what the results said and we have a perfect score 69 percent of the people chose the shadows and 31 percent of the people chose the rebellion airs you can never go wrong with a score like that so it's pretty obvious everybody likes the older models a little bit Bit more but now i'm wondering do they even like this shoe at all let's see what they think if this shoe is fire or trash 79 percent of the people chose fire and 21 percent of the people chose trash completely makes sense it's a new hot release and i know it doesn't compare to the older ones but at the same time for what it is and not being comparing to other things people are still going to appreciate it and i still love the shoe as well don't get me wrong i don't dislike these because i like the other ones more i was just saying if they were compared i would pick the other one i do feel like this is more of a trophy item type sneaker something that you might put on display maybe wear a little bit less simply because it has that crazy vibe to it and some people may or may not see themselves actually wearing this sneaker with the outfit and i completely understand that side as well Another sneaker that comes to mind with this shoe that I didn't compare this to is the Jeter Air Jordan 1. Those also have a little bit of a similar vibe when it comes to the all over print and the different styles and kind of kind of being a little bit harder of a sneaker to wear with an outfit. So now let's talk about numbers and final opinions on this shoe. As of right now, these are hitting for somewhere around 400 to 500 bucks. Retail is $170 and a lot of people have been giving mixed reviews on what they expect to happen with this shoe after it comes out. I've heard a lot of people say, hey, 
The shoe's probably gonna be worth somewhere around 300. And I've heard a lot of other people say, hey, the shoe's gonna be worth somewhere around 700. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. I am very interested to hear what people think about the shoe. It's supposed to be coming out in mainly limited boutique type shops, and we're not gonna see it on sneakers app. And there's gonna be more info that's supposed to leak out on the internet based off of the different release dates. And if you want me to make a full video on where to cop and how to cop, let me know down below in the comment section, and I'll try to get a video out for you guys as soon as possible before the shoes actually come out to the public. So either way, this is going to be a pretty limited release. There's supposed to be around 60,000 pairs that are supposed to hit North America. So we shall see how the people react to it. But I think at the end of the day, in time, this could easily be one of those trophy-like sneakers. It's similar to the band Air Jordan 1, how it's like a $1,500 shoe. I wouldn't look past seeing this sneaker hover up somewhere around $800 to $1,000, maybe a few years from now. But again, only time will tell and we shall see. Shout out to Untied LA for helping me secure a pair. If you haven't already, make sure you check them out. I have the link for them down below in the description. And don't forget to use the discount code DNA Show. That'll get you free shipping from their website. And if you ever stop in the store, let them know as well and hopefully they can Hook you guys up. So I'll see you guys in another one. Appreciate you as always. All right, y'all. I'm out. Yo, if you enjoyed this video and want to grow your collection or make extra money on the side, I built a VIP mastermind that will teach you everything that I've learned about growing my sneaker collection over the past 15 years. This will also give you access to the DNA fam in my VIP community where we talk about investing outside of sneakers. And don't worry. If you don't plan on joining the VIP community, it's okay. I also set up a private DNA fam community that gives you access to all the behind the scenes looks from the studio and multiple chances to win free sneakers and gear from weekly and monthly challenges. So all you need to do is click on the link down below in the description or the first link pinned in the comment section. That will get you set up and into the community. I'm excited to see you guys on the inside. If you made it to the end of this video, drop a comment down below and let me know what are the three greatest Air Jordan 1 colorways of all time. Oh man, I can't even answer that one. I'll let you guys do that one.